what's up YouTube, it's Jonathan from Album Reviews TV, and this week I'm reviewing the new 3 Ace Graves album, which is called Life Starts Now. It's kind of ironic that I reviewed Life Starts Now as the first thing that I ever did on this channel. Life Starts Now channel starts now. I didn't know what I was doing, what I was getting into, what I had started, and what it would become. Thank you so much for seven years on YouTube. It's coming full circle. I'm giving back to you guys now and honoring my first video that I ever did on this channel by presenting to you not only in an opening webcam video just like my original video, which I will link in the description if you want to see it, and of course I'm wearing the same shirt. I can't believe I found it in my closet, but I'm honoring that by doing my top 10 favorite Three Days Grace songs. Welcome to ARTV 7.0. The future starts now. What's up everyone? Welcome to year 7 of ARTV. It's hard to believe that it's been that long, but today, September 29th, 2016, marks the 7 year anniversary. I have two very special, very big videos coming for you today. The first of those obviously being my top 10 favorite 3 Days Grace songs. 3 Days Grace is the band that started it all. Now you're having a look around, probably you already noticed the new intro. You're going to see at the end of this video the new little outro card thing. Everything looks so professional. New icons. Have a look around on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, everything is brand new. And you're wondering, John, are you just that good of a designer? Did you do this yourself? Absolutely not. I can't design worth shit. Shout out to my girlfriend, Infinity on Hannah. Such a lovely, lovely job just all across the board. I cannot believe how hard she worked for me on this. Just getting it all ready, making sure everything from the sound effects to the logos to the design to the neon, everything, every little detail just looks so perfect to me. I cannot believe that I got a complete channel revamp like this and it looks this good. I'm so happy with it. I hope you guys love it. Definitely check out Hannah's channel if you haven't already. It's linked in the description. Three Days Grace are an alternative rock, hard rock, post-grunge band formed in the early 2000s. They had so many number one singles on active and mainstream rock radio, even on the alternative and modern rock song charts as well. Growing up, it was impossible for me to avoid them. And fortunately, I actually loved the majority of their stuff, even getting towards the end of my high school days. Now, with Transit of Venus, they really started to lose me a little bit. I liked a lot of songs on there, but it just wasn't quite for me. And then Adam Gantier left the band, their lead singer, and that was it for me. I did not enjoy their album Human with their new singer at all, and they can keep doing their thing. Kudos to them, I'm just not really into it. So all of the songs that you see on this list are from older albums. Nothing from Human is on here. I think I put one or two in the honorable mentions. If you're curious about seeing those, they're linked in the description along with my Twitter, Facebook, everything like that that I already mentioned. Don't forget to drop a like on this video because, come on, it's my seventh anniversary on YouTube. Do I really have to beg for a like? Thanks for subscribing to the channel, guys, sticking with me over the years. Without further ado, here are my top 10 favorite Three Days Grace songs. One X is my favorite Three Days Grace album, and you'll see that and learn that pretty quickly. On this list, you're gonna see multiple choices from that album, the first of those being my number 10 pick, On My Own. This is one of those tracks that seems to be about justifying breaking away from someone, whether it be moving out on your own for the first time or moving away from a negative relationship. I love the way that this track is centered kind of loosely. It can be taken different ways with its lyrical content. Now, I like this track because it does seem a little bit more darker, brooding, maybe Maybe not quite as upfront. It's a little bit more of a slow burn. I love the guitar on this track and the way that Gonchier's vocals seem a little bit distant here. And then they have that popping chorus. It just really snaps the guitars, kind of rollick here, and really get a chance to shine along with the drums and even a nice bass line on this track. Easily one of my favorites and it's really stood the test of time to become one of my favorites, not only on One X, but in their entire discography. You left me here like a shark outline on the sidewalk waiting for the rain to wash away Wash away You keep coming back to the scene of the crime But the dead can't speak and there's nothing left to say 
My number nine pick comes from Transit of Venus, the track Chalk Outline. It was the lead single from that project, and I remember being a little bit hesitant, a little bit scared whenever they were teasing it. I believe it was like on their Instagram and their Facebook page. They were releasing little pictures and snippets and that sort of thing, and I was like, are they going to go really, really electronic with this? I'm not exactly sure what to expect. And there is kind of an electronic-leaning intro on the track Chalk Outline, but I really started to love that the more I heard it. Three Days Grace needed something new in their sound, and you're going to see with not only this track, but another one that comes later in my countdown exactly why they succeeded in doing that. Now obviously on this track, Gonchier does once again the perfect job of playing the victim, not in a bad way, but he's been wronged and we see that a lot in Three Days Grace's career. Obviously I don't mean it like they're playing a card, like they're playing the victim or they're trying to get you to feel really sorry for them. This is something that you just want to kind of rally behind them and it doesn't feel like they're begging for your help, but you want to support them anyway in whatever situation that they're going through. I think it's very relatable for a lot of people and I guess I could say that I've been there for some of the elements of this track. It's easily one of my favorites on Transit of Venus. I love how they mix in kind of those rougher vocals from Adam of course and then a guitar works its way in but it's not really as prominent as it always is and I think it really worked for Three Days Grace. I fell in love with this song the first time I ever heard that creeping bass line that opens it up. Adam's vocals are absolute fire here on this track, and years later, 10 years later, in fact, it's really just surpassing most of its peers. In that time period in music, there's a lot of bands that you can look back on and just be like, why was I listening to that? But Three Days Grace are not one of those bands. 1X is something that I still come back to quite often. In fact, I own a vinyl copy of it. I really love my white vinyl copy that I got from SRC Vinyl a couple of years ago. Something really special to me and really to my teenage years in general. And like I said, this is one of those songs and those huge singles that just isn't a total cringe fest whenever you look back upon it. Animal I Have Become is talking about someone who doesn't even know themselves anymore, obviously. And we've seen other tracks in this vein from plenty of other artists, but I think that they gave it their own unique spin and it's something that feels pretty creative honestly it's kind of like a Jekyll and Hyde type scenario because this guy is maybe going out doing things that he wouldn't have normally done five ten years ago but maybe it's drugs maybe it's alcohol maybe it's the people that he's hanging around with he's just not even knowing himself anymore and he's evolved into something that he doesn't even really like anymore so he's begging for help from someone and I love the way that this track builds and then just kind of breaks down in the bridge just the vocals and a fuzzy guitar and then breaking back in for that final kick with the chorus. It's not all just rough and tough with Three Days Grace. They obviously have a pretty soft side as well, and we're going to see that on my next two choices on the list. Another one from 1X right here, over and over, is a little bit more upbeat and energetic. It might fool you at first, but this is one where he's maybe not just talking about a relationship. It could be about a relationship with alcohol or drugs, something that he's married to, if you will, because he cannot separate without a ton of trouble, and he's trying to pull himself away. And I think it was applicable to me back in the day just because, you know, things that I would fall into, something with a relationship would go wrong, not work out, and in your teenage years, I think it's something that's very, very helpful. It's a lot smarter than a lot of its peers. Some of the songs that try to do the same thing and they're just like falling straight on their face, this is one that builds up. So here I go again, chasing you down again. Why do I do this over and over because I know that even though I seek this out, I think it's going to make me happy. It's really not. And that's why I say this could be applied to so many different things. And I think that's what makes it fantastic. You were the first to say that we were not okay. You were the first to lie when we were not all right. This was my first love. She was the first to the emotions are running higher than ever on my number six pick. It's Last to Know from their album Life Starts Now. This is such a sad tune, and I'm going to let 2009 John sum it up for you a little bit. Last to Know is kind of a sad song, but in the end, it's good because it's a guy getting over a fast relationship. 
Thank you, Past John. Please get a haircut. That looks terrible. In all seriousness, I'm sure this is a pretty painful track for a lot to listen to. The emotions are so high and there's so much hurt in Adam's heart as he sings this. It mainly just starts off with a piano. The first like three-fourths of the track, it's just heartbreaking as you hear him pouring out, just not even knowing what happened. He's been left by this girl and he doesn't know where to go from there. You were the first to say that we were not okay. You were the first to lie. All these problems building up in the relationship but nothing was really ever said even though they both kind of knew and then finally I love the optimism at the end of the track as the rest of the band comes in it's a perfect summation and I think this track is pretty genius in that regard it starts off with just the woe is me and the piano but the person is coming to the realization that it's gonna be okay you know everything is gonna work out and he starts to find happiness again the rest of the band kicks in right whenever he starts realizing that and the drums start pounding there and it shifts into some guitars a little bit more bass and that sort of thing and then Adam is basically saying you know I don't need you anymore I don't need you you are not my happiness and it's a very bold song and I love that about it We kick it all the way back to Three Days Grace's self-titled debut album for my next pick, I Hate Everything About You. I remember hearing this song for the first time and falling in love with it almost instantly. My aunt from California shipped me the game NASCAR Thunder 2004, and the soundtrack on that featured the likes of Three Days Grace, Avenged Sevenfold, uh, Iggy Pop, Sum 41, a lot of amazing tunes that ended up being some of my favorites later on, and this was easily one of them. And it's really just held on for quite a while because it's really Relatable not only to one generation, but I feel like it's still very applicable. And I know I say the term relatable in a lot of ways. That's what music is a lot of the time. And I hate to use that constantly as a summation of the music itself. So let's dive a little bit deeper into this one. The song seems to be about a couple who don't really know what to do around each other. They're just laying around bored, maybe smoking a bowl, not knowing what to do with themselves next. They fight on and off. They know they love each other at their core. And that's why I love the chorus of this track so much. It seems like the two of them it's not really just one side but both are screaming at each other i love the backing vocals on this track it adds a lot and really just helps sell the mood and what they're going for it seems like a tormented mind two tormented souls who really do care for each other but at the end of the day they drive each other fucking insane and they don't know why they're still together i hate everything about you could not only be taken i don't think just about a relationship a boyfriend or a girlfriend i think it could also be taken about a relationship with a parent or a loved one a friend in general not really knowing what to say to them maybe they're just doing stuff that really bums you out or brings you down but i love the intensity of this track the drums obviously cap it off every time once the chorus rolls back around and you hear those pounding little drum fills and then the guitar and then the i hate everything about you that chorus is almost instantly recognizable even by people who aren't really fans of three days grace it's one of those huge songs from the 2000s that really just identified an era so long, so long. I always did love the artwork for their 2009 album Life Starts Now and my next pick on here is Bitter Taste, the opening track to that one. I think that it does a great job of really setting the tone for the rest of this album for what's to come and this one in particular kind of stands out because Gonchier seems so so bitter. Obviously Bitter Taste is the title of this song but it just in general just he seems like he's been fed up. This album is a comeback for them three years in between records. He's had so much tension building up inside him and this is just a pouring out of that. He's just going off on someone especially as the track builds and its momentum and its final verse it's practically yelling at someone and you're just like whoa 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 okay I hope he's not yelling at me. There's a pretty significant variation 
distinction between the verses and the chorus on this track. It's something that really sets it apart from its peers as a result of that. They seem a little bit more laid back. The guitar is just kind of like subdued in places. The drums are kind of kept limited and Adam is wandering with his voice. And then of course the chorus is really just what smacks it all home and adds in the rest of the instrumentation. And obviously Three Days Grace know their way around a hook, but this is one that always caught my ear. He stayed awake to see the ball drop Turn it way down, she never woke up Grabbed the keys to her car in the back lot Threw a shot of Jack back, left with the jackpot Expectations Go to hell Go queen, Miss America In the backseat, in a pair of could my number three pick be my most unexpected choice for the list? I think definitely so. Expectations from Transit of Venus. This song does such a good job of sucking you in with a story, not just a personal story, but it feels like Adam Gantier was writing from a different point of view here, really getting inside the mind of another. And I see this kind of playing out with this weird cinematic feel to it. I love how people didn't like this right off the bat because I loved it. That's probably what made me love it even more because people were saying, it's too weird it's too out there it's not three days grace and I'm like and eh, this is they can do whatever they want to and this sounds absolutely phenomenal I love those keys that kind of twinkle really just building the feel and luring you in like okay I'm all ears what is this gonna be and then that kind of off-kilter unsteady guitar and then that trembling piano that goes all throughout the entire song you had me hooked on the first listen and I love this song even more now Think of this song as like a three chapter book. You see its intro, she's this girl with a lot of ideas, she doesn't know where she's gonna go, and then she forays into other things, and then finally she's just watching the ball drop probably on New Year's Eve. She's sitting there just passed out on the couch and then just takes off and just into the distance through a shot of Jack back left with the jackpot. That's one of my favorite lines in Three Days Grace's career. I don't know why I love it so much, but the chorus gets a little bit more big and grandiose each time it rolls around and it feels like he's stretching that vocal range a little bit more each time and he nails it. I'm gonna keep my thoughts on this one brief because this track is straight to the point. It is anger, it is Adam shutting somebody down. It's a track that's really motivating, I feel like, in a way, because it gets you pumped up and you're like, okay, I can do this, I can take on this oppressor, somebody that is putting me down. And I feel like Three Days Grace always did a great job of not doing it in a cliche and tired way like so many bands in the scene do. We've finally reached the pinnacle of my list, and it's another one from the self-titled record all the way back in 2003. Three Days Grace were this band that were just blowing up big time. Obviously, they had hits in the form of I Hate Everything About You, and then Just Like You, and then Home was one that was on the radio and getting played and getting shared by friends whenever I really started getting into music in 2005. This album had a pretty long life to it. It had a long touring cycle. The band typically went three years in between albums, and Home was released as a single in 2004. Got a kind of weird music video that went along with it, but this track means so, so much to me because I didn't feel like I was accepted at home whenever I was a teenager. My parents criticized the way I wanted to dress, the music I wanted to listen to. I felt put down and kind of shamed as a result of that, and I was never ashamed. It just made me mad and a little bit sad and confused, but Home was always one that just felt like me expressing myself through music, and this song still connects for different reasons years on. Obviously, I've made peace with my parents. It's just interesting to see how a song can still be relevant in your life all these years later, but for completely different reasons. I love the way that home builds off of these just really angst-ridden verses, and it just builds up, and then the crashing cascade of guitars, and then the chorus just drives it like a nail in a coffin, just sending somebody away. Like, I don't want to be here. By the time I come home, you're already stoned. You're already gone. I try to get away 
an escape from all of this shit that is surrounding me, but I can never completely do it. I can never turn off my mind. And that is why Home is my favorite Three Days Grace track still to this day. Whoa, what is all this stuff floating around me? It's all new. The new outro card. Thanks again to Infinity on Hannah for designing all of the new stuff. Her channel's linked in the description along with my Twitter. Facebook, all of my social media, check out all of the new updated logos and stuff. They look fantastic. Check out the last top 10 that I did. If you want to click that little annotation right down there or check out a recent review that I did right here on this channel. Thank you guys so much for seven years on YouTube. The most successful year that I've ever had. 40,000 strong on the main channel and 30,000 plus strong on Beyond AR TV. Thank you so much. It's all thanks to you guys and I wanted to kind of bring it full circle today with my top 10 Three Days Grey songs because that's where I got my start, and I still can't believe I found this shirt. It was hidden away in a closet. I hadn't worn it in years. I never wear this shirt. But anyways, guys, don't forget to drop a like on this video. Let's get this to a thousand likes. It's my seventh anniversary on YouTube, guys. Come on, that's a special occasion, right? And obviously, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, because friends don't let friends go and subscribe. If there's other reviews or top tens you would like to see me do, sound off in the comments. Other than that, I will see you guys very soon right here on ARTV.